This is the 5 minute guide to the Deutschland class pre-dreadnoughts of the Imperial German Navy. The Deutschland class were Germany's second and last true pre-dreadnought class. Several preceding classes had been armed only with 9.4 inch guns and were really more coastal defence units, but the Braunschweig class had changed this with a heavier 11 inch armament. The Deutschlands represented an iterative improvement on this design, although they were built at a time when rumours about the HMS Dreadnought, which was also under construction, were circulating. However, even in view of this, it was decided to continue with their building, as larger ships would have needed a critical canal to be widened, and Germany couldn't afford this and the ships to be built at the same time. There were five ships in the class, Deutschland, Hanover, Pomern, Schliessen, and Schleswig-Holstein. Although ostensibly all the same design, there were a few differences. For example, Pomern had 13 watertight compartments, whilst the others had 12, and Deutschland was built with slightly thinner armour, with an 8.9 inch belt against the 9.4 inch belt of later ships. Compared to other final generation pre-dreadnoughts, such as the Lord Nelson and Connecticut classes, the ships might seem underwhelming at first. Their two twin turrets were 11 inch rather than 12 inch, their armour was 2 to 3 inches thinner, and the British and American ships carried significantly heavier secondary batteries. But it must be remembered that the German vessels were about 3,000 tonnes smaller, which at the size of this kind of battleship of the time is about a 20% reduction in mass, so lesser capability shouldn't be that much of a shock. The ship's overall armament consisted of two twin 11-inch gun turrets in the normal one forward, one aft pre-dreadnought layout. 14 6.7-inch guns in casemates formed the secondary battery, and 22 3.5-inch guns formed a tertiary battery, complemented by six torpedo tubes. Compared to the previous class, this was an increase of eight additional tertiary guns, and a movement of the secondary battery from mixed turrets and casemates to all casemates. Speed was fairly standard for pre-dreadnoughts at 18 knots. With the ships in service starting from 1906, Germany had enough true battleships to form two battle squadrons, and therefore the High Seas Fleet was officially formed. The Deutschland would remain fleet flagship until 1913, when the newly completed dreadnought Friedrich de Grosser took up the task. When World War I broke out, the Germans did not have enough dreadnoughts for these alone to make up the whole of their primary fleet. So the class was assigned to the second battle squadron, and unlike British pre-dreadnoughts, these ships would therefore see a number of fleet operations. This initially consisted largely of being part of the supporting element to the various German battlecruiser raids, but by 1916 there was some question as to whether or not they should still be part of the High Seas Fleet, as there were now 16 dreadnought battleships in service, and the Deutschlands, along with the Hessen of the previous class, limited the fleet to 18 knots, a considerable disadvantage compared to the Grand Fleet's 21 knot top speed. However, the British advantage in numbers saw them included in the High Seas Fleet's order of battle at Jutland, during which time the High Seas Fleet dubbed them the Five Minute Ships, because that was how long everyone thought they would last in a straight fight. The daylight part of the battle, however, was uneventful for the Second Battle Squadron but in the evening the battered German battlecruisers were retreating from the surviving British battlecruisers and the second battle squadron intervened, forcing the British to engage them instead whilst the German battlecruisers slipped away. The fight went quite badly for the pre-dreadnoughts, although the weather badly obscured targets on both sides and this probably let them survive. After a brief clash in which three German ships were damaged, they disengaged and managed to make it away intact. That luck ran out for the Pomern later in the night though, as she was hit by a torpedo which detonated one of the magazines and sent the ship to the bottom with her entire crew in a matter of minutes. As a result of this performance, the ships were withdrawn from the High Seas Fleet once the other, more capable sh damaged ships had been repaired. Uh, these ships were then put on secondary duties as barrack ships, guard ships and training ships. Now, at this point, most pre-dreadnought stories end. But due to the Versailles Treaty brutally cutting back the German Navy, three of the ships, along with some of the Braunschweigs, were retained. Deutschland herself was scrapped in 1922, but the other surviving three were modernised in the 1920s, with the secondary battery being replaced with newer 5.9 inch guns. They then spent the better part of the next two decades alternating between stints as training ships, refits and active service.
1936, the Hanover was decommissioned, and the other two were shortly put on training duties as the Deutschland-class heavy cruisers and the Scharnhorst came into service. That wasn't the end of their careers either, though. Schleswig-Holstein entered the port of Danzig in August 1939, and would fire the first shots in World War II on the 1st of September, when she opened fire on a Polish military base across the harbour. Both she and the Schliessen would then take part in the invasions of Denmark and Norway before returning to second-line duties. But by 1944, with the war turning against Germany, they were again repurposed, this time as air defence ships with upgraded anti-aircraft batteries. In this role, Schleswig-Holstein was bombed and sunk in December 1944, while Schliessen saw a final action providing fire support for retreating German troops before evacuating wounded troops. Two days before the war ended, she struck a mine and was scuttled the next day in shallow water. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below.